All right, it's Sunday afternoon. I'm Dr. Chase Lay. I've put together another thread support video for you that illustrates pretty well how the procedure is done and what you can expect. Instead of narrating or doing a voiceover for this video, we're just going to watch it together. And every now and then I'm going to stop and explain what I mean when I'm talking to the patient or even what the patient means when she's talking to me. So let's go through that right now. So about 10 days ago, we did four threads anchored here by this temporal hair tuft all the way down by her buckle fat pad. So it was one, two, three, four. You can still see a little bit of bruising from 10 days ago. That's longer than average, but sometimes that happens. Now stopping right here, um, the amount of bruising that she has right now, and she's still swollen, even though she doesn't look bad. The amount of bruising that she has right now is, I'd say, average. Um, for the first five days or so. But for it to still be there at day 10, that's uh, slower than average. That's a little longer than I would normally expect. You should expect to be swollen and feel uncomfortable and have some pain when you open your mouth very widely, things like that, for 10 to 14 days, if not three weeks sometimes. Uh, that's okay. But bruising typically is gone by day 10. So that's a little atypical for her in particular because she heals so fast usually and it's a little unusual for the average patient. So let's keep going. Her jawline is already supported pretty well superiorly, so this time we're gonna pull it back posteriorly. We're gonna put one, two, three, and anchoring point by this tough fascia on the ear here, because it doesn't move as much. And we'll pull this more relaxed tissue back in this posterior direction. Now, if you're doing a horizontal anterior to posterior pull with your thread supports, the reason I like to go right up against the anterior part of the ear is because that tissue is tough. If you at home pull on this part of your ear as opposed to right here, you'll notice that it's tougher and it's a better anchoring point. And sometimes when I'm watching thread supports or thread lifts, as some people call it, being done by my colleagues who are great at what they do, I notice them having their entry point or their anchoring point a little further anterior and looser tissue than I would normally place myself. Uh, that's just fine, but this is the way I like to treat these cases. So let's keep going. Did you do this rest for yourself? No, but I will. No, I haven't done threads on my face yet, but I definitely plan to. I'm going to have Dr. Ishiyama, Shion, and Emily do that for me one of these days pretty soon. You can watch that video too. At some point. I think threads are the, are the most powerful in the... Okay, so the patient just said she thinks threads are the most powerful anchor or tool for, and I think what really she means is for her goals. She's young, uh, her jawline's in good shape, it's intact, there isn't really a whole lot sagging. The threads for her keeps everything in place. Uh, when you compare threads to Ulthera or Zhao uh, Shen Dao um, or Thermage or any other treatments that you have that will actually kind of tighten and tone the tissues, uh, they all have their place and they're all useful. Uh, but all of them have results that are kind of modest and you shouldn't expect that much from them. So that's something you should know before you go and get these procedures done. But I agree with the patient that the thread supports do have a relatively strong hold for their purpose. If you were comparing the hold that a PDO barbed thread has when you were performing a procedure like what I'm performing, the hold compared to say a facelift is minimal. It's nothing, okay? A facelift where you've elevated the skin and you're placing permanent sutures deep in the tissue and you're pulling on fascia and muscle, that's a completely different procedure. That's much more powerful than threads. But for a semi-surgical procedure or non-surgical procedure, the thread supports can be pretty strong, pretty effective. Uh, the other thing I like about threads versus Ulthera or Thermage is that you don't get fat loss in the subcutaneous plane. And in young or even middle-aged Asian women, white women, any person, uh, sometimes that fat you want to keep. So uh, you might select threads over Ulthera in a situation like that. So let's keep going. 
Okay, so I'm starting the injections to numb up this entry sites. Now, what you don't know about what's in that anesthetic is there's hyaluronidase in it. That enzyme allows anesthetic to spread more easily throughout the tissue. And when I'm doing a procedure like threads, I want to put a minimum of anesthetic in, but I need it to spread around and to, in order to make the patient comfortable. So if you tell your physician to put hyaluronidase into the anesthetic, it will spread a little easier and there's a good chance that you can use less anesthetic more effectively and have less pain during the procedure. So I'm injecting in front of her ears. And that vibrating tool that I have just helps to distract from the pain. I'm going to go right. Uh, no, that shape, okay? Uh -huh. When I said I'm going right here, what I'm doing is I'm injecting in a space underneath this malar area, this zygomatic ridge and this malar bone. There are branches of a nerve called the trigeminal nerve. That's a sensory nerve. And that's gonna to help to make this space below the cheek a little more numb. Of course, we've already injected in front of the ear. We're also gonna be injecting down here close to what's called the mental nerve to get this lower part of the jaw and chin a little more numb. But you'll notice I'm not injecting all over the face because it gets too swollen and it makes it a little harder to do a decent job with the procedure. You notice how I'm injecting along the jawline here, but I also injected here, not into this vein or the carotid, but there's a muscle here called the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And from behind it, there's a nerve that wraps around at the front and gives you a little bit of sensation to the ear and the posterior part of the face that's called the great auricular nerve. So I injected along the jawline, I actually injected down here next to the great auricular nerve and I massaged that anesthetic into the tissue. So that helps to make this area just in front of the ear and along the jawline a little more numb without actually filling it with the anesthetic. If you use too much anesthetic in this entire space where you're putting the cannulas, it gets a little too swollen and it makes my ability to judge what I'm doing a little distorted because of all the puffiness, because of all the fluid. Also, patients have more swelling post-operatively after a thread support if they just get a ton of anesthetic injected into their face. No. She's a, she's a, <laughs> she's a very vocal Maybe patient. Um, Why do you do this? For your we always have a good time doing procedures. And why do a lot you of you? entertaining conversation. <laughs> but what's being it's placed right now is just betadine to complain? prep. This no, is to like sterilize the skin, it will protect you from virus, fungus, and bacteria during the procedure. So I'm putting these 18 gauge needles into place, and those are my entry points for my cannulas. You see the cannulas going in. I'm going just past my dot. And right there I just said I went past my dot, and what I meant was I went past the mark that I made on the face. I want the last few barbs of that thread support to be just a little bit past the tissue that I'm actually trying to pull upon. Because these barbs do loosen up, these threads do pull back a little bit. So I want to be a little bit past the point where I'm actually trying to anchor the thread. Feeding the threads in, pulling back on the cannula a little bit. I'm pushing forward on the thread, pulling the cannula back slowly. See the thread get shorter. Pull this kind of along with me. Now the point of pulling the tissue back with the cannulas and the threads to, at the same time is so that I don't simply pull the cannula out and then just rely on pulling on the thread. Sometimes when you see this procedure being demonstrated on social media, you see the cannula is pulled out and then the physician or the nurse pulls on these threads really hard to give you this impression that the threads are really pulling on this tissue and moving it a lot. On video, it moves it a lot, but in real life it doesn't. That's just for show. So you actually want to slide the cannula back with the threads at the same time, keeping the threads in place inside the tissue. And then, and then what you'll see now is once I've got the cannula, the metal tube that was holding the threads out, 
I'm going to pull a little bit more and create a little bit of a dimple. I want it to be just a little bit too tight right now. Not later, but I do want a dimple right now. Pull it pretty tight to where I see a little dimple and I can see the face moving. But you said to pull hard. Okay. Temporary dimple. Uh -huh. So she's saying no dimples, I'm saying temporary dimples. And physicians will tell patients that it's not a patient's job to tell a physician his or her job. Uh, that's not exactly true. This is cosmetic medicine, okay? And while my word is final when it comes to a procedure that I'm doing with a patient, there is some compromise here. I could pull on her tissue a little bit more and we could have dimples that would show for one to two weeks and she might get a little more tension, a little more pull out of it. But what she just told me was no dimples and what she means is no dimples basically this week. We performed this procedure on a Tuesday or a Wednesday I believe and she wanted to be out socializing by Friday and Saturday. Now. She's also not very shy about what she does, so that helps quite a lot. But she doesn't want dimples at that time. So it is a compromise. There's always a trade-off. She doesn't get as much pull, but she's much less likely to have a dimple that's visible in that first week. These little dimples are okay. And right here, the Press. dimples that I made on purpose, I can just massage them out immediately. And, and here I am just placing the third cannula. Still getting attached to some of the tighter fascia right around the ear. Now you'll actually notice during this third cannula being placed that's higher up, it's a little harder to get in. There is some fascial tissue, some tendinous tissue higher up near this cheekbone, near this zygomatic arch and malar area that's holding that tissue down tighter. And so it's a little harder to get the cannula through that space versus the spaces closer to the bottom of the jawline. So this past my point, when I'm going in, I can actually feel some of the threads from a week and a half ago. I don't think this lady's ever going to age. She'll age. How's that sound? Yes, with your help. Not with my help. You need to She'll do that. age. We all have to age, okay? You need to make sure. All right. <laughs> but I'll do my best. As you wish. Yeah. So we get it all the way in. No dimple, no dimple. No permanent dimples. I need a little dimple. Uh, See, I gotta, I, gotta, I need yeah. to give her a little bit of a dimple right Otherwise now. Otherwise it'll be too loose and you'll really? be in, Yeah. And you'll be in here. All the time. All the time. All the time. Tell me you need more threads. So let's stop there for a second, going back to the whole compromise with the patient again. You know, this is a patient whose tissue, whether it be her or her actual tissue, I can compromise with it. I can work with it. She keeps saying no dimples. I keep saying she needs a little bit of a dimple in the beginning. And I remind her that if she doesn't get enough pull, she'll be back asking for more of these thread supports. And that's exactly what's going on right here. We did, as I said before, 10 days before, four threads, but going in a more superior direction. And she's already back asking for three or four to go in a more posterior pull direction. And that's totally fine. Um, not everybody can tolerate procedures like that back to back. Uh, this patient in particular has no fear of these things and she just happens to heal very well, very quickly. And not everyone is like that. So this is not in any way designed to be a permanent treatment. People who like their threads actually sometimes do them a few times a year or just add a few as they as the year goes on or a couple years go on. So that dimple, I like that dimple but she doesn't want it so let's give it a little push. Now so I gave up the dimple that I liked so she'll be happy this weekend. Yes. What are you going to do? You go. And that was it. So this is what a, how a thread support is generally performed, okay? Uh, most patients don't take it this well. Most patients are more visibly uncomfortable, typically just from pressure and even just the sound of the cannulas going in, uh, although they're usually not in much discomfort. But some patients are easier to treat than others. Some patients are easier to anesthetize or make numb than others. 
And some patients, their tissue holds onto these threads very well, and some people it doesn't. And sometimes you don't know which patient you are until you have the procedure done. But hopefully the providers that you go and see have enough experience in this where they can look at you, pull on your tissue, talk to you, examine you, and say, you know what, you're going to get some result out of this. But honestly, if you were to give it a grade, I would say you would give it a grade of D or even maybe C at best. I don't think anyone ever gets like an A plus thread support result when they do these procedures. Although patients do seem to like them and they do continue to come back. So hopefully that was helpful. I'm Dr. Chase Lay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.